Hello, my name's Kat and I'm not a scientist, I am a storyteller and I am here to talk to you about ethnomythomycology which is a really fancy way of saying I'm going to talk about the folklore of fungus. So let's start at the beginning with why. Why are so many people so fascinated by fungi? And my personal, extremely scientific answer is that they are really, really weird. For example, science is all about making sense of the world and figuring out how it's put together and what things go with what other things, what's related to each other. And for that reason, the world was divided by scientists into three separate kingdoms. The kingdom of animal, the kingdom of vegetable, and the kingdom of mineral. So this carrot is a plant. It would be in with the kingdom of vegetable. This dinosaur, if it was a real dinosaur, would be in with the kingdom of animal, because it's an animal. And the bricks that make up my house, they'd be in with the kingdom of mineral, because they're rocks. So where should I put this? Well, for hundreds and hundreds of years, right up until the 1960s, mushrooms were put in with the kingdom of vegetable because people thought that they were plants. Even scientists, even mushroom specialists, even the founders of the British Mycological Society who made it their job to talk about fungi, thought that fungi were plants. And it was only in 1969, which isn't actually that long ago, that they discovered that they were actually totally wrong. Fungi are not plants. They actually have more in common with animals than they do vegetables. This, um, this mushroom has more in common with a cat than it does with a carrot, which is pretty weird. Now that's a very basic fact, this knowing that what a mushroom is. And we were getting it so wrong for such a long time. And if we are only finding out basic facts like that really quite late, then how much less must people have known about them hundreds and hundreds of years ago? Fungi are immensely varied. They smell very weird sometimes. They look really odd. They grow in dark, damp, out of the way places. They grow on dead things. They grow on poo. Some of them taste delicious. Some of them will kill you. And some of them look extremely similar to ones that taste delicious, even though they'll kill you. And you can tell even by the names that people gave them, that people were really fascinated by them. For example, we have the lawyer's wig, which looks like the curly wigs that lawyers wear when they're in court. We have the jelly ear fungus, which is really wiggly and wobbly and jelly-like and absolutely nothing like one of these at all, yet it's somehow in the same kingdom. We have the devil's fingers, which when they open, look like nothing on earth. And we have my personal favourite, the bleeding tooth fungi. These different shapes and oddness caught people's imaginations, which you can tell by the imaginative names that they gave them. And people have been making up stories about them for hundreds and hundreds of years, because there's the same thing that folklore does is what science does. It makes up stories about the world and tries to figure out how we fit in it. When there's a gap in the forest of knowledge, you'll find folklore growing up to fill that gap because people need to know where they fit and what things are. Well, the ancient Greeks called them the sons of the gods. 
And this is because they thought that they didn't just simply grow, but that they were flung down from the gods in heaven. And they travelled to earth on thunderbolts. And that was why you could often find them springing up suddenly after a storm. In Eastern Asia, the Chinese goddess of healing, Guanyin, is often depicted with a reishi fungus. And the ancient philosophers believed that if you ate enough of it for a long enough period, then it could extend your years even unto the amount of the immortal fairies, which means you would never die. That hasn't yet been proven to be true, but it is still being used in Chinese medicine and in Western medicine to this very day. In ancient Germanic cultures, there was a god called Odin. And Odin would go out every midwinter down to his stables and take out his horse, Sleipnir. Now, Sleipnir was the fastest horse that has ever lived in this world or any of the other worlds. He had eight legs and he could run so fast that he could fly. And every year on the longest night, Odin would take out Sleipnir for a special ride. And they'd take off and they'd ride through the clouds and they'd get really high up through the storm clouds and the snow clouds and the world would be spread out underneath them. And Odin would make Sleipnir go faster and faster and faster. And the horse would be trying so hard and the bridle would be cutting into his mouth and little bits of foam and specks of blood would drop from the horse's mouth during this magical ride. And when the white foam and the rent of blood hit the ground far below, Amanita muscaria would grow up. And that was why these mushrooms were considered pretty special, pretty magical. In fact, quite a lot of fungus have got associations with magic. And it's because they've got this duality about them. Some of them will heal you and make you live forever. Some of them will kill you. Some of them grow on dead things or in dark places and some of them grow in the middle of the fields around wildflowers. They're different and odd and they catch the imagination and that's why there's so much association with them with fairies and witches and other worlds and liminal spaces. In Austria these are known as hexen pills, witches mushrooms. And it's recorded that the witches used them as part of their love potion recipes, as they did in Sweden as well. Baba Yaga, the old witch of the Russian forests, who you can find hiding out in the middle of the forest with her house on old chicken's feet, she's often depicted with these mushrooms around her. And deep in the forest as well, you might find the evil wizard, Muckamore, which means poison fly, which is also an old Russian name for these mushrooms. So we've looked a little bit at the associations of fungi with magic and witchcraft. But how can you tell if someone's a witch? Simple. You use this fungus, Exidia glandulosa, otherwise known as witch's butter, although I wouldn't want to put it on my toast. It looks quite gross. Apparently, this is extremely common growing around the dwelling places of witches. So if somebody's got this growing in their garden, I'd check their bookcases for spells if I were you. But what even is it? Well, it's quite disgusting, but I'm going to tell you anyway. It's the product of a milk hare. Now, a milk hare is a magical animal conjured up by a witch for the sole purpose of stealing milk. Which seems like quite a lot of trouble to go to really, but probably it was a bit harder to get to the shops in the old days, and witches are lazy. So, the witch creates a milk hare from magic. And the milk hare looks a little bit like a dog and a little bit like a cat and a little bit like a hare and a little bit like a demon-y thing. And you really don't want to look too closely at it because it's altogether horrible. And then the witch says, milk hare, get me some milk. 
and off the milk hare goes, off through the countryside to find a cow, because that was the only place you got milk from back in medieval England. So it milks the cow, but it doesn't have opposable thumbs and it doesn't have buckets. So it milks the cow with its mouth into its stomach, which is where it carries it back to the witch. And which then says, give me the milk. And the milk hair brings up the milk from its stomach and gives it to the witch. So it's basically magical sick, which isn't very nice, but then not all folklore is nice. The witch drinks some of it. I, like I said, I don't understand the reasoning behind this, but the witch drinks this disgusting, brought up again milk from the magical animal. And what's left over gets left on the ground and goes rancid and blackens and turns into this, which is nice. If you find it and you think that you've had a witch put a curse on you, you can use this to blackmail her into taking it off. If you stab the fungus with a knife, then the witch will feel that knife in their own body and they'll appear before you and beg you to stop hurting them and you can make them take the curse away. So it's quite useful really, although it is also quite disgusting. So, moving swiftly on from magical sick, let's talk about something nicer, such as dragons. Because in Austria, Mushroom rings are thought to be caused by dragons. Tiny dragons flying around in circles and their tails drag on the ground and scorch the grass and cause those bare circles that you see sometimes in fields. In Germany, there aren't any dragons doing it. Instead, it's the devil carrying around his big buckets of milk. Clearly, he didn't know the spells to create a milk hair. And he puts these buckets down and they're so heavy and they're so tainted with evil that when he picks them up again, the grass underneath is all withered. And that's what creates those circular patches. In France, there's not the devil association and there's not dragons. Instead, it's giant bug-eyed toads just squat, squatting on the mushrooms, not really doing anything particularly dangerous, just looking generally toady. So unless you're really scared of toads, you're probably fine to go to France and look at mushrooms. In England, we don't have the toads, we don't have the devil, we don't have the dragons. Instead, we have fairies. Now, I'm sure everyone's seen those pictures in children's storybooks of the fairies picnicking on a mushroom or dancing around a mushroom, being all sweet and cute and little and friendly. Maybe something it looks a little bit like this. What a charming scene. Everyone looks so happy, which is nice. But up until Victorian times, fairies weren't considered sweet or nice or friendly or cute at all. They were considered dangerous, unpredictable and otherworldly. And the fairy rings that we saw on the fields were considered to be portals to another dangerous world and if you stepped into that world you had to be really careful and know the rules because you could come back changed or maybe not come back at all. Fairies were thought to steal musicians, lure them over the mushroom rings into their dances and the musicians would play and sing all night and the fairies would dance and trample the earth around them and then come the morning, they disappear. And all that would be left would be mushrooms growing in a ring and slightly damaged, paler grass within that ring. And the musician would wander home only to find out that a hundred years had passed, not just one night, and everybody that they knew would be dead. And we want to avoid that happening. But how can you? You just need to know the folklore rules. If you go foraging and you come across a mushroom ring, 
a fairy ring, as we call them. Don't step into it. That's simple. If you do have to step into it, then make sure you're carrying iron. A horseshoe nail is quite traditional, or a horseshoe, but these are one of the rules that folklore puts in place that works really well in rural England in medieval times when a lot of people had horses. But there's not that many horses in towns and cities now, so you probably just need to find a nail from being q or something and carry that. If you don't have a nail, don't worry. You can wear your hat backwards. Apparently that confuses them. Or you can turn your pockets inside out. That also works. Something to do with the, the world turning upside down, like removing the normality from the situation makes the fairies very confused and they don't like it. Either that or they just don't want to steal people away who look quite silly. So there you go. That is a brief overview of some of the vast amounts of mycological stories out there. And feel free to like find your own or make up your own because that's what stories are for. They're for growing and telling and retelling and adding on to. And when you go out searching for mushrooms, remember to be careful, wear your hat backwards, turn out your pockets and be safe. See ya.